Now the U.S. ambassador to Nigeria says the insecurity facing the country is a difficult problem, but not an insurmountable one. Mary Beth Leonard recently traveled to Sokoto and Kebi states to meet government leaders and civil society representatives. They discussed bilateral relations between United States and Nigeria, including security, health, education, and the COVID-19 response. The United States has provided $122 million to build capacity and support health care workers in Sokoto since 2015. Well, we're joined now by Mary Beth Leonard, the United States Ambassador to Nigeria. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, well, great one that you visited uh, Sokoto and Kirby State. And I'm wondering uh, whether there are plans for similar visits to other parts uh, of the country and similar interventions. Uh, since 2015, you have contributed about $120 million uh, to Sokoto uh, State. Yes, well, actually, you know, um, uh, yes, we do hope to, to, to make some more trips. You know, one of the things that COVID-19 did for a lot of us in 2020 was to make us a little more homebound. But as the um, as the, um, uh, the the burden of illness seems to be lower, um, uh, we're hoping that with great caution and, and we can get out and see um, in different places what it is that we're doing. I've been in, in the last month or so also to uh, to Plateau and to a Kwai Bomb. And it's just great to get out and, and see on the ground what it is the United States is doing in the areas of health and security and education uh, in economic development and opportunity. So it's an experience we hope to repeat elsewhere. In Sokoto and in Kebi, what was the priority from what you heard the locals, the government officials, the civil society organization and representatives that you met? What was said to be their priority? Was it to do with health, COVID, or to do with security? Well, I think in today's world, it's it's difficult to have the, the luxury to only be concerned about one of these things. Um, certainly, I think that security is a topic on everyone's mind. And I think in, after the weekend that we just lived, I can't possibly go further on the subject of security uh, without uh, offering condolences on the loss of General Artihiro and his colleagues. And really, their, their families and their colleagues have our, our deepest sympathies. Um, uh, loss of life is tragic in any moment. But at this time of insecurity, it feels... Uh, particularly poignant. Uh, so we are, you know, we're, the United States is mourning with Nigeria on this loss. I think the reason too it's difficult to, to separate those priorities is that they're very intertwined, aren't they? Uh, while there's certainly uh, a security matter which may have uh, expression in security assistance and training, um, there are also other elements that go into a security equation. For example, while the roots of, of violence and insecurity across Nigeria may be very different depending on the part of the country that you're in, one common thread is lack of opportunity, lack of economic opportunity. So for example, in Kebi, we went to one of our uh, West Africa Trade Hub projects to expand the uh, cultivation of rice to many more farmers so that the factory can produce more uh, rice to be sold here. So it's getting more farmers um, uh, productive in fields, it's getting more people in jobs in a factory, it's adding value to agriculture uh, to, be, to be sold here in Nigeria. The West Africa Trade Hub has lots more um, such projects up their up their sleeve. They're they're currently uh, that they're currently uh, looking at, and I feel really good about that because I think it really matches um, a, a government of Nigeria priority for enhancement diversification um, of the of the of the um, agricultural sector. Also, you know, uh, it's about education uh, to make sure that and health to make sure that you have. Uh, productive communities. It's about uh, uh, early warning mechanisms so that you can detect in advance when there are um, um, uh, unrest or, or disagreements within communities. So I think it's very difficult to separate all those apart. Um, our lives are a, an interconnected whole and those various activities reinforce each other in, in I think, very dynamic and interesting ways. Now, oh, Nigeria faces an existential uh, challenge right now. And I do recall during uh, the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's first virtual meeting with the president and, of course, other leaders in April, President Buhari asked that um, Africa, that's the uh, U.S. Uh, Africa uh, you know, command should be uh, transferred or shifted actually to Africa, to be moved from Germany uh, to Africa. Where does the United States stand on that 
And uh, what are the levels of cooperation or help uh, that uh, the U.S. will be offering Nigeria as far as security is concerned? Well, um, so I believe that my colleagues at the Department of Defense address the question of moving AFRICOM. Um, there is currently something called a global posture review going on um, in the U.S. defense community to figure out in what places we want to be uh, interacting on security matters, where personnel should be. Uh, but that question is, is separate from the, the, the question of moving AFRICOM. And I think that the studies have shown um, that moving AFRICOM would be very, very costly um, and would detract away from the program money that we have uh, to do things to do active security cooperation with countries. So while we are so flattered and, and, and grateful for President Buhari's recognition of the important role that AFRICOM, the Africa Command plays in security matters, um, I think for the time being, uh, they, will, they will be remaining where they are. In terms of what our programs are, uh, we have a really robust security cooperation, uh, not only uh, bilaterally with elements of the federal government in uh, creating new capacities and in training, um, in, in uh, joint military exercises and training, such as one that's going on now uh, down in, uh, in, in Lagos in the maritime sector, but also through a state partnership with the National Guard of the state of California that does things like uh, professional um, leadership development that works at looks at things like aircraft safety and, and maintenance um, and, and other, other sorts of emergency response. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very robust relationship and also includes, I think, the largest um, international military education and training program of any African country. Uh, we've sent uh, some seven or 800 people since 2015 okay. to a variety of leadership and skills courses in the United States. Okay, uh, so if you don't mind, very quickly then, one of the things that you were reported as having said was that the uh, United States is willing to deploy technology like drones to help Nigeria in reconnaissance and in intelligence, gather of intelligence. How is this coming on? Is this something you're doing already or you're looking to do? In just about 30 seconds before we go to break. Sure. So um, we, I think this is a time when our very long cooperation is coming to fruition and delivery on a couple of programs. Um, I actually misspoke in Sokoto. It's not a commercial sale. It's actually a grant of, of unmanned um, air reconnaissance. Um, and of course, there are also the purchase of the A-29 aircraft, um, which for which both of those programs have Nigerians right now in the United States being trained on how to use them. And those are both things that should be arriving in the country in the coming months um, and through the end of the year. So we're very excited to be able to, to, to create not only uh, new capacity through equipment, but also the ability to maintain and train others uh, on those same platforms. Okay, we want to say thank you very much, Madam Ambassador, United States Ambassador to Nigeria, Mir Beth uh, Leonard. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm sure we'll still have opportunity to have you on the program again soon.